All right, you guys, let's just keep moving. So this is the last main modeling tutorial. If you've been following along, fantastic. Uh, I'll have a conclusion video after this, but for the most part, this is the last video we'll be modeling in this series. Uh, which is going to be the hammer, okay? Uh, if you're just jumping in, no worries. You can kind of just follow this one. Um, but I encourage you to kind of go back, especially if you're learning modeling and want to build more characters, stylized characters. Um, this series is for you, all right? So let's go ahead and position our reference here. What I want to do is actually set this to for us to model here directly on the origin, okay? So what I want to do is go to our outliner. You can see that I have image plate inside and front. I want to grab the front image, duplicate that. And I'm going to call that front underscore hammer. And we'll hide our front plane. And actually, I want to go ahead and just entirely hide our character, OK? Just get everything out of the way here. So Control H to hide. And let's grab our front hammer. And now we can use this to position it right at the origin. So take a look at this. And you once you move something in Maya, if you can middle mouse drag it and it'll it'll uh, use the last transform, access you transform. So this is fine. I just want to get it kind of right on the origin here. And I can kind of position it where this is here. Right, you know, the bottom is right at the origin. All right, that's fine. So with that, let's just go ahead and start modeling, okay? What I want to do now is create a cylinder. Now, here's what's interesting. Because this hammer is so big, I would, you know, typically recommend going with 16 sides. But let me see here. So let me go ahead and rotate this to 90 degrees and position this. And let's go ahead and really just bump up this radius to about the size of this hammer. Okay, so something like this here all right i think this is good right about here it's about the center of the hammer and we're going to make adjustments kind of as we go anyways okay now the key thing like i said is if you kind of now add height to this so we're about here now and really if you look at this from all angles it looks fine and will probably hold up. If you're doing mobile games and stuff like that, I would stick with 16 sides. But since it's so large and it's gonna be a focal point on our character, I wanna give this instead of 16, right? So I would say either 16 or 32. So 32 is gonna give us a power of two. And let's say later I say, you know what? I wanna create a low poly version, watch this. You can go back and essentially select every other edge and do exactly that and not have to worry about recreating something. Now, if you pick something like 20 or 24, then you're gonna be, you're gonna have a hard time and you'll have to kind of recreate the cylinder geo, what? right? But watch, if I delete these now, every other one, control backspace, back to 16. Okay, back to 16 size, I should say. All right, so we're good here. We're gonna stick with powers of two. We're gonna go with the 32 uh, subdivision axis for this hammer, and we're gonna keep moving, okay? So what I want to do now is add one height or two height segments, okay? And let's right out the bat, go ahead and turn on symmetry. So we're gonna do world X. So now if I scale this up and down, we're all good, okay? So what I wanna do, I'm not gonna worry myself too much with getting the curvature in this orthographic view. That's one thing to understand is that when you're modeling and doing things in an orthographic view, there is no perspective distortion, okay? So again, we're just kind of using this just to get the initial shape and we're gonna keep moving from there. Now, if this grid is bothering you, no worries. Turn off the grid here in the viewport and keep moving, okay? So we will shift right click, extrude, and let's extrude it to about here, which is great. And let's just scale that. So hit R for scale, and we're gonna scale that up. And I'm gonna kind of move this back now, something about here, okay? Then I'm gonna press W, shift, move, okay? There. So this kind of gives us that initial shape that we're looking for. So take a look at it now in our perspective. That's looking good. And what I can do now is just kind of 
again, scale this back down. And I think, you know, something like this, we can play with these values later, um, is going to give us uh, some good detail, okay? I'm going to actually grab this middle set here, okay? And I'm going to just scale these up as well. Now, I'm going to scale these up just in the YZ. So grab this red one and kind of use that to scale. So we get something like this, okay? So that's looking good. Um, what I want to do here now is grab this edge and we're going to create this nice little divot here and we're going to use our bevel tool to do that. So I'm going to just kind of tweak and refine maybe these shapes here so it looks a little bit more consistent all the way across. That's looking good. So all I've been doing is just extruding, scaling, and moving. Now I want to grab this middle one here and we can actually just do W with the move tool and middle mouse drag, okay? Mi control, middle mouse drag. So again, double click that edge, control, middle mouse drag, awesome. And I wanna shift right click, multi-cut. Let's add in a couple more edges to really give us some more curvature. So by holding control, middle mouse click with the multi-cut tool, you can th throw it right here on the middle. Control, middle mouse click. Actually, let's, let's uh, go ahead and move this. Let me just verify we're good. Yep, and we can control middle mouse, move this on the normal. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this a little bit more in the middle, just to give us some nice curvature. And back to our multi-cut tool, control middle mouse, control middle mouse. And we can just kind of use our edge, control middle mouse, and just again, ever so slightly scale it, just to give it this really nice transition all the way through here okay then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead now and bevel this okay maybe I'll scale this up just a little bit more or I said scale but control middle mouse then bevel it now I'm gonna drop this fraction down a bit here notice the fraction is going to give us a thicker uh, bevel so maybe 0.25 and that's good. I, you can kind of see it's right about here on this peak and right here on this divot. Then I can give it two segments. Okay, great. So I have these two segments and then watch this. I can grab this here with our W tool, our move tool, control middle mouse drag. Look at that. We're getting that nice divot here and we can even maybe move that back to even them out a little bit more. Okay, and that's looking good and maybe scale this down just a little bit if we wanted to get a similar angle. But I, I'm liking where we're at. I'm not gonna mess with it, right? So if we look at this here in our perspective viewport, this is looking solid, okay? Now, we're at kind of a mixture of faceted and not faceted. So you can select the mesh, control, uh, shift, right click, excuse me. Don't do what I just said. So uh, select the mesh, shift, right click, Soften, harden edges, harden edge, boom. So now we're kind of on this nice uh, nice look here where everything is uh, hard surface faceted, okay? Now, if you know you like the profile, everything's looking good, you're, you're good to keep going. Um, I'm probably going to scale this down just a little bit here on the ends since we have this nice organic curvature. So I'm gonna scale that down move it in a little bit closer. So now we get something like this, okay? So a little bit more even uh, here throughout. And if you wanna give this center part more volume, then double click these edges, control, right click, two faces, two faces, and then you can just do shift period, right? And it's just a really nice way to quickly increase uh, the selection. And you can kind of scale this up, look at that. So this kind of evens it out a little bit and we st we're we still pretty good here uh, on our original reference. You know, we can kind of go up here, but I think we're uh, making good, some good progress. So I like where we're at. Maybe I'll just increase the volume here. Uh, maybe just in the right here. Actually, I'm gonna deselect these edges there these faces there and just scale it up. So really, you know, I'm just showing you how to how you can quickly ch modify, change this entire form 
just by selecting faces, right? I haven't gone crazy. I haven't added a ton of bevels. I haven't done anything like that, but I'm just kind of making sure that I'm happy with this and we're good. So let's, let's keep going. All right. Cause the next thing I want to do is we're going to get down here and we're going to create the staff, right? Or the, uh, kind of the handle of our hammer. So what I want to do is actually just kind of maybe grab these faces here and let's see where we're at. All right. So I've got these faces here. Okay. And if I go and take a look at this, um, you know, I probably want to grab another row of faces. So we have something like this. Okay. So this is going to give us some um, good detail. What I actually want to do is before I extrude it, let's create a cube and, and really get this uh, aligned. Okay. So shift right click with nothing selected and create a cube. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here. And let's go ahead and just use scale. So a little bit more freeform. We can kind of scale this up, scale it down to about the size of the attachment here. Okay. So something like this. And I'm going to bring this down where, you know, this is going to attach just a little bit more. So, we'll go, you know, a little bit off the reference, but no big deal. I, I think we're good. Okay. Now this is a perfect square. So we can kind of use this to work now with our hammer. Okay. So we'll go back to our hammer and I'm just jumping to X-ray mode to switch to X-ray mode. You can just press uh, this icon here or uh, set it to a script and hotkey. Okay. So control shift. Now we're going to just slide this out here. That's looking good. Just give us a little bit more room and watch this. We're not going to select these two or these faces. Uh, here. So again, you can hold tab and kind of marquee or drag select. Great. Then you can do a shift, right click, extrude face. Look at this. Then now we're going to kind of create this attachment. You can see that it kind of flattens out here towards the bottom. So that's what we're, we're doing. Okay. We're just kind of adding this attachment and, you know, there'd be no other way to really attach a cylindrical hammer to kind of a square platform. So this would be the most logical way to do it. Then I'm going to hit R for scale, then scale this down. Oops. So we want to make sure to only, that was odd. You see how like it's scaling the whole thing. Uh, what I'm going to do is just select the mesh, delete history, go back, select the faces. Is this still going to do it? Yeah, now we're good. So Maya just gets weird with history guys. So just be careful. If I go back here, look at all this history. It's not even that much to be honest, uh, but just delete your history, jump back to face mode and you can go back to selecting these faces. I'm going to hold tab left click, boom, and scale this down. And here we are. Okay. So we're looking good there. So this is fine. You know, we can maybe bring it up a little bit closer, but I want to leave a little bit of room there. Uh, and we can even scale this where it kind of matches the square cube that we have. So we're just scaling in each of these axes. Um, so it looks like, you know, there are two objects that are maybe, you know, crafted together. All right. So I'm happy with that. Then we're going to take our cube here and we're going to start adding some subdivisions. So the easy way to do that is go to multi-cut and you can just hit control middle mouse and it'll start adding uh, segments right down the center. Okay. Then I can kind of add another split or split these edges here. And you can kind of see now we have this nice, clean, even look with our, uh, our faces. Now for this next set, I actually want to disable symmetry because we want to uniformly scale this, uh, these sets of faces down. And if you use symmetry, it will, it won't really do that. It'll scale based off the center line. So let's just go ahead now and kind of do that. So select these faces and then shift right click extrude. All right. Now I'm going to uniformly scale this with the world here and let's just scale these here in the center. So hit these, one of these cubes and just scale that in. Look at that. Okay. So this keeps a nice square shape. Okay. So if you hit G now, you can, let me go ahead, hit G repeat last. And then there we go. 
Okay, so now I'll go ahead and again, world scale. And if you don't use world scale, watch what happens. And I scale, it's going to kind of do this where it, it doesn't scale the faces all in. It just scales the outside. So make sure, at least in this case, I'd want world scale. So it just uniformly scales these faces down just like this. So it keeps everything nice and clean and even. Okay, so I'm not too worried. I, I know I need to move some of these verts, uh, these thicknesses. So I'm going to grab these vertices here, drag them down, and do the same thing here. So we can, you know, roughly the right about right thickness. Then I'm actually going to grab these outside edges here and be careful. Uh, actually, like uniformly scaling will be fine. So you can kind of scale that in to get that taper effect. And you can do the same thing with the, the next set of edges, just kind of get that uh, get that shape. And here, I want to make sure to select all the faces and then uniformly scale that. So we get something like this, okay? So if you're happy with that, that's looking good. So what we can do now is, right, if we were, we were doing this as a sub-D model, so press three, see how it gets really soft. So we want to go ahead now and you know, add in this last part for the cylinder or the where the staff comes in. OK, and then we can put in some hold in lines. OK, so hold tab and left click drag and let's extrude again. But this time I'm going to offset. So we're going to offset just like this. OK, so this will be fun. I'm, I just want to actually minor offset. You know what? I might not even offset. I might just do a world scale again. Okay, so something like this. And then there's this fantastic tool. If we hold shift, right click in face mode called circularize. Look at that. Perfect. We have this nice, perfect circle. And if we go ahead now and like extrude down, you can see that we're going to need to scale this in just a little bit more. So if I Q, hit Q, just scale that in a little bit. And if I just kind of take a look, move it down a little bit, you can see we need to scale it in just a little bit more. I just want to make sure the outer radius, and you can kind of play with whatever thickness you want, okay? All right, I think that's good. So then what we'll do is con uh, shift right click, extrude, and just move this up, boom. So we're gonna move this up. This is where the staff and handle of the hammer is gonna insert, all right? so. Good. That was the last extrusion. And so now what we want to do is select these edges that are running on the corner, right? Because if you take a look at the hammer and we look at our reference, you can see, again, this is kind of this square corner attaching to this, again, cylindrical or tube handle. So the thing is, though, if I go ahead and bevel this as is, look what happens to the inside. Okay. So this is kind of a cool you know, hard surface technique. We have to stop the edges before they go into the circle here. So the way to do that is let's shift right click, grab our multi-cut tool or grab it from our modeling toolkit and watch just middle, control middle mouse right in the middle, okay? Then you can grab the edges now, okay? And what we're actually gonna do is I should be able to turn on our X symmetry again to save us some time, okay? So let's see. Yep, we should be good. So I'm going to grab these now. And let's go ahead and deselect these edges. And we're going to stop it right here in the middle. And we'll watch what happens. Now we can do a bevel. And let's give this maybe like a 0.4, or 0.35, whatever works for you, and two segments. And look at that. Now, if I control one to isolate, Look at what happens. We get this, which so we got our nice corners now, but I need to make sure just to clean this area up. So we're gonna turn this kind of diamond shape now. If you select the vertices, shift, hold, right click, merge vertices, merge to center, boom. We're gonna do the same thing here. Boom, all right? Then that's looking good. I wanna make sure now to clean the top of this, okay? Because again, look at uh, what's happening here. Now it looks like I definitely, I need to quickly connect these two verts. Not sure what happened there, no big deal. Just select these two and hit connect, boom, move on. So that's kind of back to where it needs to be. So 
let's find our x-axis again so we're on this side and let's grab our multi-cut tool and we're just going to split these edges here okay these faces and i'm just connecting these or cutting these vertices into this corner here and you'll see why here shortly okay if i go ahead and cut that so then now now that i got everything set up and clean i can select these ed edge loops here and all the way up until this part here so i can simply do another bevel and watch boom okay do, do this bevel and add two segments and look at that okay so now if you hit three smooth preview Look at how nice that looks, right? Nice, clean, there's no artifacts. I mean, hell, I can go ahead and even give this, you know, a fong, and you can see that there's no pinching, artifacting, nothing. Nice and clean on this plan planar object, okay? So we're happy with this. If you want, you can clean up this last edge here by selecting these and hit Control Backspace, but I think we're good. So we can keep moving, okay? So now that we got that, let's just go ahead and really wrap up the handle, which is fairly easy. So if we go ahead again and hit uh, create cylinder, this time we're going to create this with, if we go to our channel box, 16 sides again, 16 subdivisions. And let's kind of start from here. We're going to work our way up to the, to the top. Okay, so 16 subdivisions, radius, increase that a bit, something like that, and let's just start moving, extruding, and adjusting. So I'm going to grab this face here, I'm going to select these faces by, again, if you click, drag, select with nothing, then control, left click, you can see that you can deselect that. So I'll go ahead now and hit extrude face, offset, oops, offset. And hit G to repeat last, and boom, let's just keep moving. So I'm going to actually extrude this up here. Ooh, you know what? I kind of approached that a little bit wrong. Uh, what I want to do is actually extrude it up to here first, then hit G again, offset this a little bit, hit G, and then extrude. There we go. So now we're left with this set of faces here. You can kind of see where we're at. And if I wanted to, I can select these faces, right? And to get this little inset here, you can just simply shift, right click, extrude. And watch this, move this in on the normal. Okay, and we're good to go. All right, now we can select these faces. You can see this little vert kind of coming up a bit. You can just scale that down. I mean, really, we want to take that vertice here and just move this down okay something like this maybe we can play with uh, that a little bit but I can also scale this where it's nice and even that's looking good that's looking good and then I can select these faces here and we can hold W control middle mouse and see how that moves that out on the normal really nicely and we can multi-cut control middle mouse and double click this edge loop and move this out okay and we can grab these edges here you can see how it's a little bit more organic not flat so we can scale these down something like this and here's where we're at okay something like that's nice we're just going to keep moving and I will move these up. I'm going to texture this detail and do some texture baking in a later tutorial. So we'll come back to that later. So now select these faces here, deselect the bottom faces, control shift extrude face. We're going to move this up and we're going to select these faces now and we're going to, again, extrude faces. I'm going to move this out. And I'm going to grab these verts here. Just scale them. They're good. Give that a little bit of a taper by uniformly scaling. So let's take a look. Oops. 
I kind of messed that up uniformly scale. Uh, remember, modeling toolkit doesn't like when you have scale with uh, uniform scale with symmetry. So turn that off. Then you can scale this out. Okay. Now we are set to. There we go. Just read, drag, select, and now you can uniformly scale from the center. Okay. Here we are. And what we can do is grab these faces again here. And let's do another extrude. Move these up. Something like this. Grab these faces again and control shift. Uh, excuse me, shift right click extrude and we can move these out on the normal again. There you go. So we're getting this nice staggered look here. And if you want, you can select these edges on the end, scale them out a bit, uniformly scale them out. And we can go back and grab this, this center piece for our, for the hammer. And again, control, oops, got to make sure I deselect these edges here. So let's do that again. Clean select. So click whatever off here tab and we're good all set and then shift right click extrude and we can start to move this guy all the way up hit w and just straight up move and look at this boom right up on into where we insert this and i mean that was damn near perfect look at that these two are combined or not combined but intersecting and they're looking solid and Here's our hammer, look at this. And in about, you know, 20 or so minutes, we created this nice looking hammer. A uh, couple of things we need to finish detailing. We can see that, you know, there's some pieces of geometry here. I just hit frame F to frame back in. I'm actually gonna control backspace, delete this, and let's select this edge here. Yeah, let's just move that down, right? So this is going to, again, give us this nice look here. And we can kind of move some things up, get this nice tapering effect, this staggering effect. And better believe we're going to hold all of this form now with our trusty bevel tool. Okay, so I'm going to double click this area. Double click all these edges. We're going to take a look. Pretty happy with how all that's looking out. If you want, before your bevels, I would for sure, let's grab multi-cut, control middle mouse. Like, let's say you want to give this a little bit more form, right? So it doesn't look too flat or organic. You certainly can, right? So control middle mouse, maybe give these just a little bit more form. And you know what? Maybe move this up a bit, something like that. And if we take a look at the bottom, you can kind of see what's, uh, what's happening here. So that's all looking solid. Um, and maybe we start from the bottom and go up, right? Because in this case, this is really organic looking. So we can do a quick bevel and do two segments. And this is going to be a larger bevel, right? Larger probably than more than what we have anywhere else. So then I can now double click these and do another bevel. But these are going to be nice, tight holding lines, right? Because again, if we don't, watch what happens. I hit F to frame, hit three. Look at that. Look at that mess, right? Looks kind of cool, but this is definitely not what we want, right? So again, we double click these edges and do a bevel and give it a nice tight bevel, maybe point to two segments. And then now watch, look at that. So it holds that form really nicely. So we want to definitely do the same thing here. Okay. Maybe tighten that up, hit point, point one five. This is going to be, you know, pretty tight down here. I would even maybe go to point 0.1 and there we go. Oh, that's looking solid. Okay. So we're going to work our way up here and you know, if you're still not sure or you're messing with the form, definitely leave bevel off for last. You do not want to be beveling and still making form changes, but I'm pretty happy with what we got and we can just keep, you know, keep moving. So two segments and maybe fraction 0.35. Look at this, boom, hit three. If I undo that, watch, 
look at the MS, right? And then I redo that with control Y, look at that, nice and tight, okay? So that's what holding lines do, they hold the form. And then we definitely wanna add maybe a few more. Remember, this is sub D modeling, not game modeling. So if you're doing a game, this is fine. Um, or even maybe clean up some of these bevels we don't need. But I am gonna add some, a few segments. I'm gonna add three segments here and hit uh, connect again and add three segments there. So it subdivides better. Okay, there we go. So everything's looking pretty good. Happy with uh, how things are subdividing, how things are looking. The last thing that I want to do is add this cool looking, these, these fabrics, right? This wrap here, okay? Now, the nice way to do this is if I go ahead and hit Control D, I'm gonna just duplicate the hammerhead. Delete, you know, well, when you duplicate, you don't have history, but go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna just grab my front hammer reference, Control One, and let's start adding that uh, the fabric wrap. Now, one way I've showed in, uh, previous tutorials is making this live, go to quad draw and watch this. I can hold tab, then I can kind of middle mouse drag to get what I want, something like this. And then you can almost, I can get this right here, click drag, at, you know, to start doing, don't do that in an orthographic view, but you can kind of click drag and you can start to, you know, work your way around and you know i can you know start here and kind of do that but it's it's not as intuitive um but you can definitely maybe you know start with one tab move tab move tab move do that and extrude i i i recommend that that's actually fine but one thing i want to do is just use the existing geo and show you how to use the multi-cut tool and a, a way that you probably didn't think you could so let's grab multi-cut and watch this if you click off and click left click hold look at this i can cut this across and i can even maybe if i start here and then go wide look at that i can start to get all of these cuts in here that is part of the existing geo and watch so once i cut these maybe this one was a little bit too wide there we go so Okay, let's now go in here, and it looks like a, a bit of a mess, okay? Well, no worries, watch this. You select the edges that you don't want, in this case, the ones that are kind of running straight up and down. Control backspace, and look at that. Look at that, we're, we're basically done. So now I can select all of this and keep the edge loops that I want, Okay, uh, are we doing okay? Yeah, we wanna keep these ones down here at the bottom. So we have this loop, this loop, and uh, looks like I needed to also delete this, these sets of edges here. So backspace. All right, so now we're back here, back here, and I will just these. Basis. So I'm, I'm just shift clicking. There we go. Shift clicking, double click. All right. Look at that. Clean, clean. And then you can shift click, delete the um, edges you don't want. And then if I wanted to, right, you can go back to these edges just ever so slightly bevel these, okay, like really, really tight, 0.025, something like that maybe, and we can delete these faces in the middle, right, because these are really close fabrics, okay, and I need to do a little bit of cleanup here, no big deal, we can use target weld, and we can start target welding these faces to the, uh, I would say, outwards, Okay, look at that. That's looking solid. And I would say I need to do that one more time for the, so I'll control D duplicate. 
I'll select my reference here. And I want to do that for these ones kind of running across there. Okay. So I'd say that's fine here. And if we take a look at our reference again, taking a look at how this is kind of wrapped, this is kind of the approach that we're going for here, right? So I can select these and do another multi-cut. And if I wanted to, I would say I'd probably start from here. Remember, left click, drag off, and just kind of, we're getting the overall shape that we want. Okay, left click, drag, left click, drag, and we're gonna delete, obviously, whatever we don't need. Control one to isolate. And let's go ahead and select these edges that we don't want. Okay, and I will go ahead and grab these. Okay, this worked out pretty well. Shift, left click, delete. And I would say I can probably delete these ones here, right? Because these are the bottom layer ones. And just like before, I will go ahead and do a very small bevel. I think it was like 0.025 and hit Q. It's a tool and we can delete these interfaces because we want these to be separate objects. Okay. So we have these, we have that, and then we have one more just on the inside here. And let's just go ahead and wrap this up here and we'll continue to move along. So multi-cut, we have one kind of down the center and I want to take this down here and this down here. Cool. I think that's fine. And we can do some, some, some cleanup of that one after. Okay. Let's see. I do need to split that one more. I actually need to, right, need to give these, uh, we have that one, that one. No, I think, I think we're good. Okay. If I go ahead and select, it's actually these here. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and select it here because I'll probably have to manually maybe move these over uh, un underneath, okay? So we click drag select, make sure we didn't select anything we didn't want to. Delete those. This is kind of the inner wrap, which is good. And select this here, maybe even move these over. Bevel, again, it's really tight, 0.05. Remember, it's fraction, so it's not an actual full value. Maybe 0.5 was fine. 0.25. There we go. Delete. All right. So here we go. So we got our three straps. These are all the straps that we're going to be using on our uh, hammer now. So I will kind of isolate this. And control one. Definitely give our straps here, right? I'm going to select everything first, delete history, select our straps, and let's give it a new favorite material. And we're going to make this kind of that, that brown. So if we take a look, maybe we can just, yeah, eye drop it right off of here. We can see what we're working with. Okay, so here we go. And now we want to just essentially just layer this. So we're gonna start with this bottom layer here, which is the last ones that we just did. So watch kind of how I approach and create these like layered fabric, all right? So I'm gonna straight up extrude these. So Control E or Shift right click, extrude, and move these out on the normal. Okay, something like that. Those are, that's definitely too thick. Maybe let's see, this is thicker fabric, 0 0.03, 0 0.35. 0 you know, whatever you want to work with is fine. Honestly, I probably won't mind 0.5. I think that's fine. Cause it's going to give it a really nice look. Well, they are going to be layered. So 
maybe I'll go back to extrude face here and let's just do that in the channel box because we can just do local translate 0.4. Okay, great. So this is kind of this initial layer, this layer and this layer, which is good. Then I want to take this set of geo, right? Because again, looking at a reference, we kind of have those on the top. Okay, so here is where we're just going to do the same thing. But this time, we're going to shift right click and we're going to use. Actually, we have to go because I'm looking for transform. So let's just go into vertex. And shift right click and transform components. Okay, now we can move these out even further. Something like that. Now I'm probably gonna do this where I select this geometry here. Okay, we're gonna delete the inner piece. Actually, I'm gonna just do it like this. Delete, select, select the face loop by shift clicking, then shift period, grow. Okay, then from here, we can now, right, because this has been offsetted, extrude, okay, Sh control E, and then give this now a thickness, and look at that, okay? So we didn't have to worry about going in, yeah, 0.4 is fine, and look at that, boom. There we go, okay? Now there's gonna be some areas we're gonna have to fix, no big deal, okay? And what we can do now is if we select this, we can make this look a little bit more organic by going to our mod modeling toolkit, actually just doing a multi-cut again, control middle mouse, control middle mouse. Over here on the middle, we can grab these and just ever so slightly move these on the normal. Control middle mouse, look at that. Just gonna move these in. And what I'm gonna do again is multi-cut right on the edges here, okay? Now what I am gonna do at this point, let me undo the last one is select all of these objects, shift right click, and let's do a separate, okay? Now what separate does is it takes all of these objects and creates them now into separate objects like this. So great, each one of these straps are separate, which is what I want. Delete history, control G group, and then we can delete all of these empty nodes that we don't need, keeping this all clean. And we'll come back and finish this off here shortly. Uh, and this is the last step that I wanna do is just kind of go to multi-cut, Essentially, just one by one and give these straps some organic looks. So we're cutting there, great. And we're gonna select these now. You kind of see that they're uh, moving or looping around. So we're actually gonna delete these bottom faces and just move these out on the normal. So what happens is we get this, right? So you, it looks a lot more like fabric and softer, right? Instead of like that very flat looking. So if I go ahead now and do that to essentially the rest of these objects, right? Multi-cut, control middle mouse, select them, control middle mouse drag just to make them look more organic. You can see how things are starting to look, okay? Now again, we're gonna multi-cut there in the middle, multi-cut there around. This one actually had some faces removed, which is fine. We can select these ones, these faces, and move them out, okay? Making our way through. So I'm gonna do that to the rest of these real quick. So I'm gonna pause and then pick up. So these are the last two, and I just wanna quickly show that you can grab, you know, your multi-cut tool, and even if they're separate object, while with multiple objects selected, you can go ahead and multi-edit different objects is what I'm trying to get at. So you can see I can go ahead now, select these, select these, and move these on the normal, even though they're two separate objects. So just so you can use multi-component here. Select both objects and select the multi-component and you're good to go, all right? So there you go. I mean, look at that. We now have these objects here and it's looking pretty solid if I select all everything. Uh, it it's looking good. 
So a little bit of cleanup I need to do down here. I'm going to split the edges and I'm actually going to do this where I have this kind of just moving over here, kind of like this, because this is that bottom layer that we see in, in, in the reference. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I don't think you need to watch me cut, split polygons and um, do that. So I'll clean that up, have that all, all ready to go. And then you can see a little bit, maybe I you know, some where you can see some gaps here. And if that happens, honestly, what will probably be good is just kind of taking this. Actually, let me duplicate it and just grabbing this face here. These sets of faces. So I'm shift clicking around. So you can kind of select these loops eventually if, if you knew if you know this is what you want goofed up that last one there we go shift click delete and i'm gonna give this one that same uh fong material and so there you go so i'm gonna also you know just kind of move this in so we don't have to worry too much you know it's a nice quick and easy way right we're just going for some efficiencies making sure we have a lot of efficiencies here um and then we can even you know, shift, uh, shift, right click, extrude, move that. So that has a little bit of thickness, 0.2, and we we no longer see through it, right? But I'll clean that up. That's all I'm gonna do, so we don't have to worry about moving everything perfectly um, to avoid gaps. I am gonna like, you know, in some areas though, just bring it down where you don't see too much, right? That might be a little bit too much. So we're just gonna soft select and move, okay? So again, a lot of just minor tweaking, adjusting, especially when you have this many overlapping objects. But I think you guys get it. The last, last thing I wanna do is just grab these, hit B to disable uh, soft select mode. And, you know, I recommend duplicating this if you're if you're still working on the form. So you don't have to come back and remove uh, your bevels. But I'm going to grab these edge loops all the way around, bevel, two segments, and boom. Look at that. And we can give this a shift right click, soften harden edges, harden edge. And I think we're good, guys. Uh, so we went ahead very quickly and efficiently you know, model this entire hammer out. We have this cool looking fabric, layered fabric uh, look. So if I go ahead and smooth preview everything, look at that. And now because I gave them that nice little divot in the middle, it looks a lot more natural. And feel free, feel free to just like go in there and start moving some things so it doesn't look too perfect, right? So you're gonna make it look a lot more natural. Um, so it looks like it was hand wrapped and whatnot, okay? But that's my last step here. Of course, like and subscribe is always appreciated. And that's it, you guys. This is pretty exciting. We just got through, what, 10, 12 videos um, of us modeling this character from beginning to end. So I'll call this hammer. And let's show our character. Let's kind of show where we are, okay? And I'm gonna move now the hammer. Remember, I'm gonna delete history or freeze transforms, delete history, grab this hammer group, and we should be good. Okay, and I can maybe set up some materials as well, right? Like if this is gonna be kind of that tanned look, we can do favorite material, and we can do color. I drop that, okay? And the last thing, I'm gonna have one more wrap up video, just kind of like, here are some final edits, here's some things you wanna keep in mind. And then we're gonna get into a lot of uh, UVs and not even a lot, UVs are so easy. So I can't wait to do that video. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, just, just kind of excited here, you guys. So we, we really wrap this up and we're gonna move on. Um, Please, if you guys got any suggestions or questions, let me know down in the comments below if you want me to cover any new topics. Uh, I'm going to follow up with some substance tutorials and some UV mapping and texturing tutorials. So that's what we'll end up next. But I'll stop rambling. I think we're good. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.